Hi everybody, Jo here again. Thanks for popping in today. I hope you're keeping well. And I have to say, welcome to our lovely extravaganza. Oh, the next four days, you're going to have a ball, honestly. And I'm so proud of the designs that the design team have made. They've done the most amazing work with Tracy's new stamps. And speaking of Tracy's new stamps, honestly, I absolutely adore every single one. And when you see them, you'll know why. The detail, I mean, just amazing. The actual collection is called Winter Whispers and they're just fabulous. And I know a lot of you have been asking for winter stamps, for Christmas stamps. So it just shows you Tracy listens. And I mean, honestly, I couldn't <laughs> decide which ones to, to start with. So I've gone for this design for our first little tutorial. And I just thought for me, I'm trying to show you, can you see the sparkle? You probably can't. You know, I do need a cameraman to come in and help me. Oh, we might have caught a little bit there. But we've got two beautiful new fairies called Eve and Star. And we've got this lovely Christmas tree called Wild Pine. Now I'm saying the names now because you know what I'm like, I will forget. I'll get so carried away with the stamping, I'll forget the names. It's the hardest bit for me when we get new stamps, is actually learning the names. Something to do with my head, but there we go. Anyway, so I'm going to plump up my cushion, get comfy in my chair, so I hope you do the same. And this is the design we're going to do, or something similar, you know what I'm like. So I'm going to put that where I can see it. And I'm going to start with a piece of my Multifarious card. And this is the A5 size. And I love this size. And I'm just getting my copy of paper. You know what I'm like. You know me by now. And we're going to stamp the tree first. So this is the wild pine. Now there are two trees. This is the larger one. And I've noticed it's not quite straight on my acrylic block. So we'll pop it straight. And I'm going to ink up in the black, the nocturne. Now I have to say I've done this in the brown as well. And it stamps beautifully. It looks lovely in the brown. But for this one, I'm just going to use the black. I go through phases. I don't know about you. But when we get new um, stamps, honestly... It's so exciting because you just you don't know which one to use first and we get so giddy and I love seeing what the rest of the design team create. So lovely. So that's had a good inking. So I'm going to stamp this in the middle and again, you know me, I've got to stamp it sideways and I just want to go sort of there. And again, the detail is amazing. So I'm just going to let that ink soak into the card and then lift it up. Beautiful. Look at that. Let me just bring it a bit closer. Honestly. I mean, you could do a whole design just with the tree. But I had to use these new fairies. Again, the detail. And I love the hats. And although, you know, we're thinking Christmas, these can be used all times of the year. I'm thinking, especially if, if you like your Halloween cards, orange, orange tones. I mean, <laughs> my head, honestly, there were so many ideas running through my head. I almost couldn't get my samples made quick enough. Right, so I'm going to use the black again and I've just got a little bit on there. So I'm just going to come in with my inky binky. And again, I'm going to turn my card to the sideways. And I'm just going to stamp her so her feet are sort of level-ish with the tree. So I'm going to go for that. Now again, she's a lovely big fairy. And this is Star with a double R, so I need to remember that. And again, because she's silhouette, I'm going to give that ink time to soak in. So I'm not going to lift her up too quickly. And I love the fact that they're facing each other. 
again, look. And, you know, the fact that she's got the lovely um, lantern. And I'm just going to bring in our other fairy. So this is Eve. And again, sticking with the black. And then just running out of room on my desk. We'll pop her. Just got the perfect amount of room. This size card is just perfect for me for these lovely three stamps. Look at her legs. Wish my legs looked like that. Eric is sat under my table and he's been out for a lovely long walk this morning. So if you hear snoring, it's Eric, bless him. So funny, I think he always decides to snore when I'm recording a video. Lift that up, there we go. Beautiful. Like I say, the detail, the attention. I mean, every last little, look at that little dot. And what I think is lovely is all... Each of these three stamps would make a beautiful card on their own. But obviously I couldn't decide which one, so I had to use all three. Now I'm just giving them a blot because VersaFine Claire is your slower drying ink and I don't want to smudge it. Now we've got the fabulous little, the mini fairy lantern look. And that just, obviously it has to go with our lovely fairies. So... For my Christmas tree here, we're having the alternative Christmas tree this year, so we're not having a star on the top. And obviously the fairies, neither of those two wanted to sit on the top, did they? So we're going to put a little lantern. And I'm just going to pop this one just hanging from the top there. And then we'll have another one. And again, I've just caught the edge of my stamp. Now, I have to say, clever Emma Jo, she has done a fabulous sample where she's made fairy lights out of these lanterns. And I thought that was such a clever idea. Whereas mine are just going to be baubles on here. So we'll have another one there. And obviously the two fairies are coming to add more baubles to the tree. But do check out Emma Jo's. It's such a clever idea making them into fairy lights. I thought, oh, I might need to borrow that. We'll put one more there so that I've left room. Now, what I've done on a scrap piece of card, and I do this, I save all my scraps, look, and I've stamped a whole row and I colour them in and cut them out ready and I have my little tin, so you know I have my tin of butterflies, but I also now have a, a tin of these in different colours. We've got some orange ones, some red ones, and now some blue ones. Again, that's just the way my head works. I mean, I often find with sort of things like my butterflies, my little pound stamps like this, if I'm stamping one to cut out, I might as well stamp a few. So that's our lovely scene stamped up. And for this, I wanted to keep to just sort of one colour tone. So I've gone for the blue at all. And we're just going to add a little bit of sort of scenery. And I'm going to come in with my hill mask and just add a little bit of blue just to ground my whole design. So I'm not specifically thinking snow, I'm just thinking just sort of a little bit of grounding. Again, brush in the lid, ink and lid. All right, so we'll, we'll go this way, look, we'll do a bit of a... just want to get her feet there and our tree. I say it's just a bit of colour at the bottom and then I'm going to come this way to just catch, there we go, that'll just catch her toe there. I'm sure she must do ballet. I think she's a ballerina one, don't you? 
the way she's got that toe poised. There we go. And it just gives a little bit of grounding at the base. And then with my circle mask, and I'm going to turn, I just find it easier for me, you know me, turn it the other way around. And I'm going to see, oh yes, I, luckily I stamped those close enough, look, I can almost use it part as a moon, but part as a spotlight. So I'm going to start at the bottom. So my colour deeper at the bottom. And again, always on the mask first. And then move my thumb round. And then come to the top. When I've got less ink on, look. And then some lovely circular motions because I don't want it very da dark, look. I just want that nice smooth blending. So what I'll do now is just add a little bit round the edges. So we'll come in on this corner and down the side just to take that sort of whiteness off the design. I'm just coming in with my copy paper. I don't want to put my hands on. I've got some lovely white space and I'm really happy with my stamping. So you know what it's like, ladies and gents. The last thing you want to do is be really happy with something and then put a dirty mark on it. Because I know I'm not the only one who's done it. I know you've done it too. Right, a little bit more in this corner. And these brushes are fabulous for this. And I think the thing is, don't add too much ink on. Nice and gentle, just tickle it and you get that lovely colour. Now, I'm going to leave this ink because I'm going to come in with one of our mini snowflakes and just add some snowflakes in the background. And I'm going to use the same colour to keep it tone on tone. Just be aware, I better not hold that over their header because I'll drop it. And um, These are more of a foamy sort of ink pad, so don't press too hard on your stamp. Well, I find it best not to. Just be gently, gently when you're inking up. Right, we'll bring this back and we'll just add a couple of snowflakes. So we'll add one there and I love the fact it's tone on tone and again these are so delicate let's have one over here and this side and it's lovely to have sort of coming off the page I always think it looks nice to have part of a, a snowflake so we'll have part there And then just up here, maybe just catch the edge down here. Yes, I think that's enough. I don't want to do any, any more. I like that. So we'll pop that out of the way. And what we're going to do now is we're just going to add some colour. And for this, I'm very simply, so I'm not doing anything difficult today. Often I find when I get new stamps, you know, I like to sort of almost use designs that I've done before and techniques. So I'm going to come in with my watercolour pencils. Now, you know me, we do a bit of a cheats colouring here. Now, in this pack, we've got... Look, and yes, I'm afraid I do have to have them in order. A light blue, a mid blue and a dark blue. I've got a purple that wants to play, but no, you're not playing today. And all I'm going to do is very simply do a bit of a cheats colouring here. So I'm going to come in on the hat here, look, and I'm just going to add some dark at the base here, where I know it'll be my dark blue. Now, I'm not a colourist, so... Those of you that are watching the tar, obviously, you know, you colour this how you wish. I just do a bit of a cheat colouring. So I'm then going to come in with my light just at the top here where the moon is going to catch it. And then I'm just going to come in with my mid blue and almost blend that into the light and into the dark at the same time. So, the wings, I'm going to do the same. So, some dark down the edges here. And then my light blue will be at the base. And again, I'm not pressing on too hard. You don't need to be rough. And then my mid. And I keep them in my hands all the time. 
One of the reasons I do that is because then they don't roll off my table. Have you ever noticed pencils? Why are they circular or even cylindrical? And it, they roll. Well, mine do anyway. Not only do they roll on Eric and make him jump, but I'm always worried about the lead breaking. Right, so some dark blue on the lantern. Some light blue in the middle. And then my mid blue. Just there, blending nice and gently, gently, blending those two colours together. Now, these ones here, I've cut out already and I'm going to decoupage, but I'm just going to put a little bit of the mid blue around the edge so that just in case you can see a little bit underneath, in case my decoupaging is not sort of perfect, I always like to do a little bit of... You know, the odd time, I don't know about you, but I've actually coloured these in and uh, forgotten that I've been decoupaging them. I get so carried away with my colouring in that I've and coloured things in and then I've realised that I'm decoupaging over the top. Please tell me you've done that as well. It's not just me. That would make me feel so much better. <laughs> Now, again, I think these would look lovely in different colour tones. I mean, I think if you're making cards for neighbours or friends, you could have just the tree, you could have one of the fairies, you could have, I mean, so many different combinations. But also, wouldn't it be nice if you knew what colour your neighbour, if they were having a theme for Christmas, so say they were having a purple theme, purple and silver, you could make the card in those colours and then it would match and I think that would be lovely. Right, so her wing. I mean, again, I've done my fairies the same, but you could use different colours, couldn't you? I just thought I wanted mine all, all the same. I'm going for a bit of a coordination here. This is where Eve's got in touch with Star before they've left and said, right, what we're wearing tonight, we've got to coordinate. Lovely. Now, what I am going to do is just get my yellow and just add some colour to star's hair here and again here and I'm just going to use my watercolour pencil just to add that nice bit of colour just a pop of colour I don't want it to be too much but I'm just going to add a bit on here and on these lovely wispy bits and then on her beautiful I think these are like tassels. <laughs> well, like a good tassel, don't we? So we're going to cut. And I'm, I'm not going to add water to these bits. I'm just going to leave them with the pencil. Your gel pens would look lovely with this. I almost didn't want them too sparkly. I don't want to, them to distract from the rest of my design. So I'm just going to add a little bit of yellow on here. Again, like I say, we're, we're girls that coordinate here. And then for my tree, I'm going to come in with, I've got one of my clean colour. And this is number, I know you want to know, 36, the light blue. And the little circles here, I'm just going to colour with my pen. Now again, if you you could, if you wanted, stamp a few card designs in one go and then maybe have an afternoon colouring in, that would be nice, wouldn't it? You could make yourself a nice brew and then just spend an afternoon just adding colour. So we've got a few of these lovely little circles here. Have I got them all? Oh, 
I've missed that one. So those of you that were telling me I've missed that one, thank you. And then with my metallic, mat I can't speak, metallic marker, the blue, I'm just going to come in and add some little dots. Again, where Trace is drawn the dots, I'm just going to come in. And add some of those lovely little dots. And it's a combination of using all the product, you know, the products you've got. So we'll just add some dots here. And I think it's nice to just keep it, you know, we've got lovely cohesive design here with, with the blue. And we'll add some here. And we've got these lovely little dots here. And again, on star here. I don't want to leave, I like some white, so I'm going to leave some white. I'm going to come in with my brush look. And whenever I'm doing my watercolour, I always start with the lightest colour. So where the blue is on a hat look, I'll start with that. And then I'll go into the mid blue. And you can really see it activating. And then into the dark blue. And blend that dark blue. And then it's important to wash your brush because again we're going to on her wing into the light blue then into the mid blue and then into the dark blue and i just do the same process so here on the lantern in the middle and then you can see the next blue and then that lovely dark blue So light blue, mid, and then the dark. And it's important to wash your brush because obviously, because you finished on the dark blue, you don't want to go into the light then. And it just blends the colours beautifully. So with our light into our mid, you can really see that there, and then into the dark. And then instantly you've got almost, it helps with the 3D look. But again, it's not taken, I mean, it's not taken a lot of anything, has it? It's just been lovely. So what we'll do now is I'm going to add a little bit of faux snow. So I've got my white Posca and just at the base of the tree, we'll add a little bit of snow and just at the base of our fairies. And again, I'm not being over, not overthinking this. Just want some dots. I'm going to add some snow splats in a minute anyway. But what I do want to do is come in with my Wink of Stella and just add some sparkle. So around the moon look, just going to add a lovely bit of sparkle and then around our baubles. And then here around the baubles. And then on the bauble so I'm starting in the middle because my wink of Stella will just pick up a little bit of that blue look so again start in the middle and then round the edge and we'll do the same on our lovely fairy hats we'll add some sparkle and then on the wings and it's these little finishing touches the attention the detail that will make the difference with your project and again, just clean my brush look. It's important. I don't want to pick that up next time and it have blue on it. And in fact, we'll add a little bit on the snow so it just sparkles. There we go. So I've got my three lovely baubles ready to decoupage. Now we have our lovely silicon adhesive so i'm just going to take the lid off and i just have a little pokey tool look so what i tend to do is just almost bend now you can use foam pads for this if you want but i'm just going to use a little bit of the silicon adhesive and we'll just pop these in place now you could use our bippity boppity glue and have them flat again it depends if you want them raised or you want them flat depends if you're posting that's something we have to think of these days don't we so we'll just pop that 
there and I'm just going to give this a wipe get rid of my glue otherwise I'll have glue everywhere and we don't want that do we because let's face it we're going to get Posca everywhere in a minute a couple of little finishing off tricks so before we add our Posca we just want our lovely pastel pencils and we'll get the the white and just add a little bit just a little bit of highlight I, I don't want a lot but just a little bit of shape with it being pastel <laughs> I could say I need to add some shape to her legs but like I say I think she's got fabulous shaped legs and because it's pastel, I'm just smudging it a little. It'll just help to fix it. I don't need to spray any fixative on this because I'm only using it a little bit. And I'm just going to give her a couple of little cheeks look. There we go. I don't want to add any more. That's just enough. I don't want to overcook it. And that's, I don't know if you'll be able to see. Pick the sparkle up. So we need some snow. So I'm going to add, I often get asked about the different Posca pens. So we have the 5M, which is the chunky nib, and the 1M. Now, you can make splats out of both. Um, the 5M, you tend to get bigger splats. I tend to have one of each. But just to show you, I'll give it a good shake. And a pump. And then we'll get some lovely snow splats. So this is the one. And I am just want to put some over my lanterns, look. I want to try and avoid even stars' faces. But we've put some at the feet. There you go, you've got some snow at your feet, girls. And on your lantern there. But we'll just avoid your face. Now you could mask the faces, cover them up, but as long as you're careful with your pen, tell it to behave, you'll get the snow exactly where you want it there we go so that was the one i was using and there we've got some lovely snow look and some lovely sparkle and our girls there are going to decorate that tree ready for christmas so i'm just going to wipe that up because obviously we've got snow everywhere and if i bring in the finished one so when it's matted and laid up that's what we get and then that's the one that we've just created so I hope you enjoyed that and I've less spaces look ready for them to hang the lanterns on so thank you very much for popping in today and enjoy the rest of the extravaganza do watch all the lovely tutorials won't you and have fun and I can't wait to see you. I'll see you again tomorrow. Have a nice evening. Take care. Love and hugs from me. Bye for now.